Hey guys, Zarak here, and today I'm bringing you guys another video, and we are going to be doing the second part of the Twine tutorial. Now, this episode is going to be focusing mainly on variables, um, and as well as some ways of changing to different passages that isn't just the typical that we went through last episode. Um, in terms of the series, what we're going to be doing is this video is going to be on variables, and then afterwards we're going to be looking to inventory systems. In a future episode, we're going to be looking at stat systems, and we're going to be looking at images and sounds. So keep an eye on this channel for those future uh, tutorials. But today we're going to be based going over the basics of variables, so you can make your first proper game. So I got a passage here, and this is basically all the variable stuff you're going to need for a very basic. Um, a basic program, basic functionality. These are basically most of what I used in Rise of the Crowd here, which we'll go into in a little bit so I can show you it actually in action. Um, and they work pretty much flawlessly. So what we have, uh, if we ignore this uh, orange bit down here for now, this bit here is Harlow. So in the last episode, I explained that there was different languages, defaults to Harlow. You also have Sugarcube. Uh, and they also have Chatbook, uh, Will, and Snowman, I think, as well. We are only going over Harlow and Sugarcube for these episodes. Um, so this set of code here is Harlow. This set of code here um, is Sugarcube. So we'll go over that in a second. So very simply, these are the ways to set variables. Um, they work very similar to basically every other bit of code. Uh, so you can see we have set in these uh, singular brackets with a colon you then have the dollar sign which signifies that it's a variable you get the variable name and then you can either have a two and then with singular quotations I believe uh, speech marks do work as well but I just use singular quotations uh, you can do that for a string so this variable name uh, has a string of random letters uh, you can set a variable to be true or false which is a boolean uh, or you can set it to be a number, an integer, and I believe float works in the exact same way as well. Uh, so we could probably set this to like be 2.1, whatever. Um, then your if statements. Ifs and elses and stuff, again, very common coding language. Uh, and it's very easy and very simple to do. So again, similar structure with the brackets. If with a colon, the var is, and then whatever you do, you can also use... Um, uh, operators uh, so I could use like equals um, and stuff like that um, for most of them I don't really use them too much um, so refer to the guides uh, the hollow the sugar cube guides uh, they will be down in the description again uh, in every episode they will be down in the description as well as the link to the discord uh, so any more complex program problems that you can't find um, either via this tutorial or via the guides you can go onto a discord and those guys are amazing and they will help you out um, you also need these two brackets here now you put what you want in these if uh, to be displayed the text you want to be displayed in here right so if this variable was true I would be seeing this else I'd be seeing that basically uh, and then you also have else ifs that you can use and they have a hyphen in here um, and again, works very, very similarly. So that's the very basics of Harlow's version of variables. Now we look at sugar cubes, which is the bit down here. And I apologize, I cannot get rid of this color. Uh, actually, I probably could. Um, oh. um, if I go to change the format to sugar cube. Um, yep, there you go. It gets rid of the um, colors so you can actually see it. Um, so... It works very, very similarly, but it's slightly different. So, for the set commands, instead of doing uh, basically any variable, actually, instead of doing the uh, singular normal bracket, you need to do double uh, triangular brackets either side. You also don't need a colon. If you use a colon, it will not work. So, if you're converting from Harlow to Sugarcube, you'll need to change these from normal bracket to the triangulars and you also need to remove the colons which was probably the most time consuming thing that happened when I converted uh, the rise of the crowd here from Harlow to Sugarcube um, otherwise works the exact same for your sets the if commands are slightly different so instead of using these brackets you don't need them 
Um, but what you do need is these if statements um, and a few other conditions and variables as well. So uh, make sure to look on the guides to make sure you have the right versions. Um, they basically act like a container. So imagine if you put an if statement, you've got a lunchbox and you putting if blah 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 is the box, you then need the lid. And the lid here is this slash if. I believe it's this HTML type code, uh, but don't quote me on that because I'm not very good at coding um, outside of these in interactive fiction uh, programs. Um, furthermore, if you want to use an else and an else if, they need to be in these ifs. Um, if you had these um, outside over here, they will not work. They will throw up errors and you'll have a great time. Uh, so they need to be in between these ifs. You can also nestle another if in as well. So I could have another if um, in here if I wanted and then close it um, again very, very simply. Um, and we'll see an example of that in a minute. So they're the very basics of how to do variables um, in these languages. So now let's go to the rise of the crowd here. This is the project that uh, I've been most recently working on. Um, what I will do is in the description I will link my portfolio. You can go on the projects uh, tab, you can go to the rise of the crowd here, you can both play it on my itch.io page and also there is a Google Drive link um, under I think documentation. Uh, click it on there you've actually got the HTML files for both projects for both the twine uh, but both the, the uh, Harlow and the sugar cube uh, so you can go and import them and then look at them now this looks scary trust me it's not we'll dissect things real quick um, so this bit in the red here this is a character creation that I've made we'll be looking at that in a second because this is basically all variables uh, this main frame here uh, is basically the main spine of the game what uh, what the player does these green bits are all dialogue uh, And this blue bit here is a quest um, And then this orange bit is the inventory system now. We're gonna ignore basically 90% of this um, the way to get these colors uh, Is via these tags so you can add a tag you can add a tag name and then once you add a tag name You can also change it as a color now the beauty about it is that if I, for example, want to say that this one here is also going to be dialogue, as long as I type dialogue in right, it will actually automatically put that color in there. Uh, it's a really, really nice thing, and I just use it for knowing where uh, certain pieces are. Um, so it's a really nice way of um, color coordinating an organization. Uh, but anyway, we're basically going to ignore 90% of this project. Feel free to download it and have a look at it yourself. Uh, that's absolutely fine. Um, but we're going to be paying attention to this. So these are all my variables and stuff like that. Now, because I have it that you can actually reset the character creation when you're finished, um, I have this page here where you can see they're all set to null. Uh, so there's nothing in these and these are set to false and whatnot. You don't need to do them, but I would probably make a habit of doing it. Uh, for two reasons. One, that means that if you do need to revert a variable for whatever reason, it's already nullified. You can just go back to that page, uh, go back to that passage to nullify it. And also, it just keeps an eye on what uh, variables you actually have and how you've written them. Uh, because trust me, you will forget how you've written them so many bloody times. Uh, also, a good thing to know is this line here. Uh, set name to prompt. Now this here means that your player can actually input what they want and we'll see on the sugar cube version of it as well in a minute because it's slightly different. Um, but you can see you've got the prompt here, you have the text of what it shows on the screen and then this here is blank as that will then be filled in um, for the player. You also have this here, go to, uh, has a hyphen in Harlow, uh, we'll see that in sugar cube it doesn't. Um, and that will go to the race passage. It's just another way of going to different passages. Um, you can do this without the player being interacting with it. So for example, in this, this prompt basically acts as like a plus one elevation um, in the console. So it will always run no matter what. And then as soon as that's run, and as soon as you've hit enter, you've entered your name, you hit the enter key, it will then take you to race. Um, I think there is a way I could force it um, but then that would defeat the point of this prompt. So that's a nice thing to know. Um, 
and then basically most of the character creation is you go to different passages as you can see you can play as an elf human or anthropomorphic fox and they will click on one of these and then it will take you to the passage then that passage will just set that variable to that string um, so you can see you got an elf set to male set to large etc etc it's pretty straightforward now these ones here is where it gets a little bit more complicated uh, and trust me it looks scary it's not and there is probably a very simple way of doing this like very uh, condensed way uh, I often with my code do a bit long winded so you can probably break this down a little bit more uh, but I have set race to either one of these three uh, this is because this is a randomly generated version uh, so you can see there's a lot of either's uh, make sure to write it exactly like this so you have to have another bracket in the set uh, so set gender 2 and then another bracket for the either um, and then everything here is string so every time every one of these can be different uh, so you could hit play and get a fox uh, who's female with brown fur example uh, or you could get a human that's a melee fighter and is large whatever um, you get the point and you can see these ifs and else's um, in full force here with all the brackets and then again go to and then it goes to the weapons one which is very simple here again just more sets and then we go to character finish now this is where the player can then go back and say they don't like that character and they can do it again if they want to um, and it this is just printing all these variables so you don't have to put like print whatever you can just put a uh, dollar sign and then the variable name uh, and it will print that name uh, so if I just hit play real quick uh, and pull it on my actual screen because it's on the wrong screen um, and put my name as Zoroark hit OK hit that we want it to be randomly made we can see that we got a small sized female human archer with black skin she's bold she's wearing a loincloth and she has a lucky copper coin that can no longer be used as an heirloom so that's very very simple uh, another thing that I want to mention while we are in this is another way of changing the passage uh, and that's this live command again it's slightly different sugar cube we'll show it in a second um, but this live command basically means that after nine seconds has passed it will then go to this passage it's basically just a way of putting a timer in instead of saying go to this passage um, so you can always take this off and it will go straight to this passage but you kind of want the player to read this um, so we'll go there uh, ignore this line for now we'll go into that in the inventory section uh, inventory episode because it's a bit complicated um, and we're just doing basic variables and basic stuff here uh, so that's pretty much it for the harlow side um, it's very very simple once you get your head around it uh, now let's go to the sugar cube side uh, so everything again is the exact same um, as what it was before uh, but you can see obviously they've got the double uh, triangular brackets uh, for all the sets uh, now for the name prompt it's actually different it's instead of the prompt thing it's a label so you have label you would then have the text that you would want you then have text box which actually brings up the box that the player can type in then you have the variable that you want changed so we want the name then we want to leave that one blank because obviously that needs to be what the name is going to be and then this bit here race autofocus is our go to um, it's a little bit more complex uh, a little bit more complex and a little bit more scruffy um, and I don't really understand why it works this way but it does so copy that down if you want to have a interactive bit where the player can type in their name and you're using sugarcube um, on this the Eva you don't have any of the brackets here uh, you just have brackets on this side again it's pretty much the same stuff it's a little bit neat so you can see I actually cleaned this one up um, a little bit more and you can see these ifs that are in effect here uh, so you can see we've got these uh, ifs here and um, they're all closed and then again a go to go to on here doesn't have a hyphen uh, so you have to take the go uh, the hyphen out of the go to if you want to use that uh, then if we go down to this one you can see that um, the live command has been replaced with timed and timed has to be closed again like an if statement uh, so time nine seconds go to go to the library and then close twine uh, timed and I think that's basically it for the basic functionalities of the variables uh, in both 
Harlow and Sugar Cube. Like I said, I'll leave this all in the description so you can actually have a look around uh, and see some of the mess because this is not the cleanest way of doing this, I can assure you that. So anyway guys, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, leave a like down below. Comment down below if anything was a bit unclear or if there's anything you want me to go over uh, that I didn't mention is going to be in our roadmap. Uh, so the next is going to be this inventory system um, and how this works so you can get that all functioning. Um, and then yeah, uh, subscribe if you're new and enjoy my content. Make sure to check out the Discord and the guides and everything down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out everybody.